Hi, I'm Jennifer Burns, and I'm the Director of Academics with Turning Point Academy. And here with me is our Chief Education Officer, Hutz Hertzberg. Hi, Hutz. Well, Jen, so good to be with you. Nice to be with you. Nice to be with you. So Turning Point Academy is just over a year old. Tell me a little bit about what's been going on over the past year. Jen, so much. <laughs> so much. Uh, we really... I began in the summer of 2022, and uh, we have been able to uh, get some traction in this first year plus. Uh, we have four major initiatives that we're focused on. One is seeding schools across the country, and that's one. Secondly is really um, hosting some of the premier educator summits and conferences in the country, and uh, we've been able to do a couple of those already. And then uh, developing some of the areas of curriculum where we feel like there's really a need, really an opportunity. Yeah and uh, that is happening as well. And then we're very excited about our Turning Point Academy Association for bringing together schools as well as individuals from across the country to share a work and a passion for reformation to education. All that our Turning Point Academy Association in June. Excellent. Why do you think it's so important that we have something like Turning Point Academy? Yeah, that's such a good question. I think it doesn't take very long for anybody who's have any any pulse at all on what's happening in education to realize that there's a desperate need in our country to bring reformation, renewal, and even revival to education. Uh, education today is very different than when we went to school. And uh, we feel like there's intentional indoctrination, even sexualization of our children. There's all kinds of ideologies that are really driving so much of the education and curriculum that kids are receiving today. And at the end of the day, we feel like we need to be an alternative to what's happening in not only the public school system, many private schools as well, that really have more of a woke agenda, a woke ideology, than really the student's best interest. And so for those reasons and more, we feel like Turning Point Academy is a much, much needed resource for parents and uh, educators today. Excellent. I know that Charlie had such a burden for what was going on in education, and that's why it was so important for him to start Academy. So tell me a little bit about those four initiatives. Um, you said seeding five C schools. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yes, yes. We've coined a phrase, five C schools and those five c stands for a christian classical conservative church-based and cost affordable and every one of those c's is, is very important to our, our model and you add on to that um, a hybrid philosophy of or model of education as well which which i can explain but we say the uh, schools uh, that we're involved in the schools that we're seeding uh, are based on christian faith based on a biblical worldview we also believe classical education is a very, very powerful education philosophy and method, methodology, pedagogy, um, that we can, we can talk about. But then also conservative. We believe that we want to conserve the founding values uh, and virtues of our country and, and, the, and the values of the, beauty, the beautiful, the true, and the, and the good uh, are worth conserving, if you will. And then um, we're working with churches, church-based, and there's several reasons for that. But one of the reasons is, is that so often churches are underutilized during the course of the day. And many churches uh, are not being used. And so we look at it as an opportunity during the course of the week where we can actually help a church then uh, host a school, such as this model that we're talking about. We also believe there's a lot of benefits for the church too. Uh, this is a tangible way they can make a difference in education uh, for not only their people, but also for people in the community. And then fifth, and cost affordable. We feel like uh, so much of education, the private education, has really been um, so expensive that many families are priced out of education. And uh, depending where you are in the country, uh, one year's education being worth from twelve to $50,000. And so we want to make this model, and it is uh, this model, is affordable because we're partnering with local churches and because our personnel in this hybrid model is not full-time employees for those two reasons, other reasons as well. So Christian, 
classical conservative church based foster program. So, why is it so important that a school like this be church based? Why, why is it important that the churches get involved in education? Well, as you well know, uh, the churches were the locus, the nexus of education for founding of our country until really just this last century. And um, for whatever reason, the church has abdicated the role as the government has become more involved. The church has stepped back and said, that's what the government does. We do Sunday worship and we do Sunday school. But the education of our children now has, has been outsourced to the government, basically. And so we feel very, very important for the church to reclaim its role as being the center of education for a family. And not just on Sundays, but the whole of the education of the child. And so that's why we're very jealous that the church is reclaiming the role, not just for the pragmatic or practical reasons that I mentioned earlier, but for the philosophical and we believe even biblical reasons that the church take a primary role in the education of children. Excellent. What would you tell a pastor who might feel like they need to be a little bit neutral about the about education? Well, that's a great question because pastors are feeling, many pastors feel like they are able to be neutral on a lot of things, not just education. And um, we have very strong feelings at uh, Turning Point Academy that um, this is a time where churches don't have the option to be neutral anymore. Uh, government education is not neutral. Our political climate is not neutral. Uh, and people are people in their churches, in the pews, are dying for direction from their pastors. And so we would say, and I would say, and I know you agree, that pastors need to be the leaders in speaking to the issues of our day, including education. Excellent. So you were talking about seeding these 5C schools and then educating educators. Can you tell me a little bit more about what Turning Point Academy has done to educate educators and why that's so important? Right. Well, we have what we've called educator summits where we bring together educational experts in respective fields to help equip those that are in the public schools as teachers and administrators, those that are in private, including Christian schools, and also homeschoolers, to really equip them with the tools to be able to navigate education in, in our day. And so uh, we feel like this is absolutely critical because there's not many places where educators can go right now and really get the kind of tools and the equipping that we feel are essential because so much of the, the, the education that these educators receive is coming from a totally different ideological base. Virtually every teacher education program in the country, with only a few exceptions, teach uh, students from a very progressive uh, education students from a very progressive kind of, of methodology and philosophy of education. And so we are trying to speak and calling really people back to what we believe is real true education, more of a classical form of education. And that has been the undercurrent of every educator summit that we've done so far. So can you tell us a little bit more about classical education? Why is that so important? Why is that a philosophy that Turning Point Academy believes in? Well, you know, I would be very glad to talk about it, but I'm sitting with an expert in classical education. So why don't you speak to that? Well, I would love to talk about classical education. Um, you know, I think classical education is so important for so many reasons. You know, it's grounded first and foremost in the purpose of us as, as human beings. As you know, you know, God created us to glorify him, right? We're to know him, glorify him, enjoy him forever. And we, it, it, it just makes sense that the education that our children get helps them get closer to their very purpose. They're not just producers and consumers the way our current public school system treats them, really, that they are designed to be ones who glorify God. And so they need to understand what that means 
And so a, a classical Christian education does that for them. And then just the methodology of, of a classical education, understanding that it's grounded in the trivium and our understanding of how students' brains develop and, and then that forming or informing what we teach them when we teach them it. Our approach to the students, our approach to the subjects is so very important. When we, when we have a, a, an education system that really doesn't understand how a student's brains develop, then you ask students to do things at the wrong time. And, right. and that just doesn't make sense. And so the, just the whole foundation of a classical education makes sense. And then, of course, that we want to teach our students about what is good and true and beautiful, that all of a, a person's education truly forms them in totality to be a virtuous and noble human, ones that will be God's vice regents. And so that's so important. So being grounded in the great works of literature um, teaching students in a, a history in chronological order that helps them understand that it's truly a story that unfolds, that there is a cause and effect and, and that our actions have consequences. To meditate on um, characters of, of goodness, truth, and beauty and great virtue, all of that is so important in a student's education. You know, that's so well said, Jen. And when you have an understanding, an educational philosophy such as what you described, and a pedagogical understanding of what you described, it, it also ties into really our, our third thing, which is really conservative. And, and so speak to that a little bit about why we feel so strongly that education is, is, needs to be conservative alongside of being classical. Right. It's rooted in that Western tradition, right, that values the family, values um, a meritocracy that when you work hard, you you get what you are working hard for. You know that's so important, and um, it's really not conservative. Isn't about Democrat versus Republican. It's about being rooted in those Western that Western tradition. That's right. Really, that Western tradition so very important. And I, and I know we've talked a little bit about church based already, but that you are the founders of a church-based school, this model that we're unpacking here a little bit. And from your perspective, what has been the benefits of being in partnership with the Lost Church? You know what? I think the benefits are, are on both sides, both the church and the school itself. So I'll talk about the school first. You know, it is, it is a far easier lift to start a school that is in an established building like a church. And what we found is that when the church truly embraces that education is missional, that they're willing to do, um, to provide some of that back end support, like the administration and, and payroll and you know, handling some of those things that are a lot of paperwork for a brand new school to get started. You know, it's really nice to be able to have that kind of support with an established church. But I believe that there's so much benefit for the church itself too. You know, the church really um, once was the, the center of really exceptional education. And I believe that it's their call to help parents be the ones who are pouring into their kids. And they need to be really encouraging and, and making available exceptional Christian education to their families so that they can do that at an affordable price. I mean, that's, that's really, I think, a, a, a calling of the church. And I know for many churches, though, this may not have been their primary purpose. This becomes an outreach to the community as well. And uh, I know an example of your school uh, that uh, you draw from how many different communities? So our school draws from a 30 mile radius and actually is representing about 50 different churches. But with that said, what it a really interesting thing has happened over the past 18 years of being in existence is that at first we served a very small portion of our church community. There were only 
a handful of families that were homeschooling and, and joined us on this um, journey to join a hybrid school. But then over the past 18 years, it's amazing to see both that the church um, has taken more church families have taken advantage of having the school there. And then more community members who have joined the school took advantage of the of the church and um, and have become regular attenders of the church. Fantastic. So it's been maybe an unintended consequence, but it's been a wonderful one. Yes, absolutely. It's grown. It's grown the church in more ways than one, for sure. And of course, a blessing to those families as well. Well, can you talk a little bit about the hybrid model? Because of the hybrid model, it is possible to keep tuition down low. But it also is so much more than that in terms of just some of the benefits of the hybrid model. Right. There, there are a multitude of benefits, I think. And let's start with the fact that students are not behind a desk eight hours a day, five days a week. And that's just, that's not naturally how our students um, should learn. So there's some flexibility. When students come to school one or two days a week, then they've got the flexibility in their schedule that allows them to learn how they need to learn. So to tell, you know, tell actually our audience a little bit more about the hybrid approach, what that means is that students are full-time students, right. but they're only part-time under the roof of the church or the school. And so then that gives them some flexibility the other days of the week. They're, they're doing the work that's assigned from those days, but they can have some flexibility to when they get that work done, how they get it done. And so it allows students who have interests outside of school, like maybe athletic interests or music interests or art interests, to be able to cultivate that part of who they are um, in the, the process of the day or in the rhythm of the day along with their schoolwork. Well, and, and that's so true, and I can speak from personal experience, it's true in our own family situation, but it also allows them that you're not trying to cram in practice, homework, dinner, all, you know, and for the children, you know, students often, you know, get shorted on their sleep because they're doing homework well into the evening hours, night hours. And so it does provide some really, really good flexibility. Plus, just to be honest, I mean, there is wasted time in the tradition of five day weeks. You're right, for sure. You know, that this this model, you know, you, I think you use the analogy of concentrated laundry detergent. Yeah. That the student gets all that they need, but not more than what they need right. during the days of their school. And then it can be executed on the other days. What I also love, too, about the hybrid model is I feel like we can offer a better education because what it allows students to do is have that concentrated time during daylight hours to read really robust works of literature, to think deeply about what is being taught to them and, and what they're learning and what they're reading. And also it gives them that time to write about it as well or ex figure out how to express their thoughts. And that just, that takes a while. It, it just takes some good concentrated, but daylight hours, not nighttime where you're so sleepy. You can't even in focus, and focus, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that, that was so good. And, then, and so because of that, and then also because of the way the teachers are structured, it does allow for it to become cost effective. It's really cool. Right. Right. That parents, so most parents, most families, this modern education, whereas the traditional five-day-a-week private school, as we said earlier, is be very, very expensive, and and it's not like you only pay that once. You have to pay it every year, and then you have to pay for every child, and it just becomes cost prohibitive. Absolutely, absolutely, and and we really feel at, at Turning Point Academy, we feel so um, compelled to show people a way to make exceptional education, not mediocre education, but exceptional education affordable and, and everyone can do it. We really, we, we really, we can, we can show them how to do that. And that's so very important. And Jim, we've been talking a lot about uh, this wonderful 5C model. Why don't you talk a little bit about some of the curriculum and resources that we've also developed that go hand in glove with what we're trying to do on the school side. Sure. 
So we, there is lots of wonderful curriculum out there and we, we want to point people in that direction. But we've also seen that there are gaps. There are places really where we can add benefit. And so we've done that in a couple of different ways. We have, uh, we think that it's really important for people to understand American uh, history and civics. And so we've done a couple of things to help that. One is we've got a little Patriots kit. It is a, um, a kit that's a five-day unit study actually on the Declaration of Independence for kids who are kindergarten through second grade. And it introduces them to the really important concepts of the Declaration of Independence. Then we have a constitution kit for students who are third through sixth grade. That too is a five-day unit study that helps students understand about the constitution and our founding fathers. We have a um, Patriots catechism that is 52 questions and answers that all Patriots should know. And that's appropriate really for students who are middle school all the way up to their parents. And that has two components. One is a book that has the 52 questions and answers with some context and really fun, um, little fun facts about American history. And then it comes with 52 flashcards. So, because really a catechism was used to help people really understand why they believe what they believe in the Christian faith. And so we used that concept and applied it to American history and American civics. So we're excited about that one. And all, all excellent resources. But there's a new one that has been developed and it's under the curriculum heading, but it's really more of a mentorship program. Speak to that a little bit. It's very exciting, a new development for Journey Point Academy. Right, yes, yes. I'm really excited about this. You know, being a mama of three boys myself, it um, it's really important. We, You know what is going on with young men in this culture that um, first and foremost, they're being marginalized. Um, dads are being marginalized is, is not important and nothing could be further from the truth, as you know. And so it, it started, I think, then, and it has trickled down to our young men really feeling purposeless. And, um, and so what we've done is we've created something called Ironworks, and it is really a ministry for young men and their fathers that um, we hope to partner with churches and schools around the country to implement. And the Ironworks program has a couple of different elements to it. One is really solid biblical teaching on what it means to be a, a biblical man. And um, also talks about life skills. And because people want to feel, especially our young men, want to feel accomplished. Like they they know something that they can have something to offer. And so being, helping them get solid in their life skills and feel competent as young men is really important. And then there's a physical component. You know, it is good to strengthen ourselves biblically and, uh, and feel competent, but it's also our young men need to be physically strong too and have some of those physical challenges. And so there's a physical challenge element to it as well. So we're looking for to partner with schools and churches that have middle school and high school young men who would like to implement the ironworks at their, um, at their um, facilities. And if Great. somebody was interested or a school or a church was interested, where do they go for more information? Excellent. Well, our website provides wonderful information about all of our resources that we've been talking about. It's turningpointacademy.com. And then this, you can slash ironworks. Turningpointacademy.com slash ironworks. Yes. But as you said, information, more information about all the things we've talked right. about be found on our website. Absolutely. Absolutely. So Hutz, would you talk a little bit about our association? Yeah, I am so excited about our association. There's really two different tracks, if you will, in the association. We're first trying to bring together schools that share our values and we've gotten a little sense of our values, but we really haven't talked too much about that. But those that share the values, which are clearly delineated on our materials as well as our website, which um, really express the very kinds of things that we've been talking about. 
uh, we invite those schools uh, after a relatively short process of application to become part of the association. So that's one track. Then the other track is for individuals that may not even be in a school or leading a school, but are concerned parents or are concerned teachers that may be in the public school. Education advocates, right? Education People who are really passionate about it, right? That's a great word for it. And, and so we have an opportunity or an avenue for them to be a part of the association. So really two different tracks, but with a common purpose of trying to bring reformation and working together cooperatively to really have impact. So it's awareness, it's, it's working cooperatively together, but then it's doing something. And and so those are our main uh, objectives with the association. And uh, we're just really getting traction now. We have 36 states already represented and it's growing, the interest is growing. And we invite any of those who may be even watching this to consider joining our association and it can learn more at our website as well. Well, I think it's been so neat to see how our association members have worked collaboratively with each other that it's just been um, amazing that someone say in California is doing something really interesting that someone on the East Coast that we're made aware of wants to do but they're a little bit further along and so we can connect them and they can really help each other make an impact in their local area. And so together we can really make a difference. Yeah, when we lock arms together, we can have a greater impact than if we were all to be siloed away trying to do our own thing. And so really the goal of the association is to bring together schools and individuals across the country so together we can accomplish more in the world of education. Absolutely, absolutely wonderful. Well, thank you. It was, it was great talking with you.